al hijr the rock. With the name of Allah, the most gracious, the ever merciful. Alif, Lam, Ra, I am Allah, the all-seeing. These are the verses of the perfect book and of the Qur'an that distinguishes the right from the wrong. Often those who disbelieve in the verses of this perfect book would wish they had been Muslims. Leave them alone to eat and enjoy themselves, and let vain hopes beguile them, but they will soon know the reality. And never did we destroy a township, but it had a decree made known. No people can outstrip its term, and none can ever remain behind. And they say, O oh, you to whom this reminder has been revealed, you are a madman indeed. Why do you not bring the angels for punishment to us, if you are of the truthful? We send no angels until the punishment becomes rightly due, and when once we do send them, these disbelievers will not be the respited ones. Verily it was we, we ourself, who have revealed this reminder, and it is we who are most certainly its guardian. Indeed, we sent messengers before you to the sects of the former peoples. Yet, not a single messenger ever came to them, but they treated him scornfully. Just as we made this a habit with the peoples gone by, so do we cause this tendency of scornful treatment enter the minds of these people who sever their ties with God. They will not believe in this Quran though the precedence of the former peoples has already gone before them, showing them how the opposition of truth makes them deserving of the punishment of God. And if we open to them a gate of the heaven, and they, the angels, began ascending through it, even then these people would surely say, Our eyes have only been dazed. Rather, we are a bewitched people. We have indeed set up constellations in the heaven, and we have decked it fair for the beholders. And we have guarded it against the intrusion of every rebellious rejected Satan. As to one who wishes to steal a hearing of the revelation to distort it, a bright fiery flame pursues him. We have spread out and put fertilizers in the earth from outside, and set up firm mountains therein and we have caused to grow upon it every suitable thing in due proportion. And we have provided in it means of livelihood for you, and even for all others whom it is not for you to provide. And there is not a thing, but we have the vast treasures of it, and we have not sent it down but according to a proper and prescribed measure. And we send impregnating winds, and pour forth water from the clouds, and give it to you to drink. You are not the ones to store it up. And surely it is we ourselves who give life and cause death, and it is we who are the sole survivors after everything perishes. And indeed we know those among you who are the foremost in accepting the truth, and we indeed know those who are the laggards. And certainly it is your Lord who will gather them together. Verily he is all-wise, all-knowing. Surely we created human being from dry, ringing clay, transformed from black mud molded into shape. And we created the jinn before him from the fire of intensely hot wind. And recall the time when your Lord said to the angels, I am indeed going to create a human being from dry, ringing clay, formed from black mud, molded into shape. So when I have shaped him in perfection, and have breathed my revelation into him, fall you down in submission to him. And when he created the human being, the angels submitted, all of them together. But Iblis though he was separately bidden to do the same, did not. He stubbornly refused to be with those who submit. 
The Lord said, Iblis, what is the reason with you that you would not be with those who submit? He replied, I would never submit to a human being whom you have created from dry ringing clay formed from black mud molded into shape. The Lord said, If it is so, then get out from this state, for surely you are rejected. And of course my disapproval shall be on you till the day of requital. He said, My Lord, then grant me respite till the day when these human beings shall be raised to spiritual life. The Lord said, You are indeed of those already granted respite. Till the day of which the time is known to me. He said, My Lord, since you have condemned me as astray and erring, I will surely make evil of straying from the straight path, fair seeming to them, as long as they stay on the earth. I shall seduce them all. Accept your sincere servants from among them, your chosen and purified ones, whom I shall not be able to seduce. Lord said, The path that my sincere servants follow leads straight to me. As for my servants, you have no authority over them. Different, however, is the case of such of the deviators who choose to follow you. And of course, Jehenna is the promised place for such of them all. It has seven gates. Each gate shall have an assigned portion of them who have gone astray. Surely those who guard against evil and are dutiful to me and humankind shall live amidst gardens and fountains. It will be said to them, Enter therein to live in peace and be secure, and we shall remove every vestige of rancor that may be in their hearts. They will be like brothers, seated cheerfully, on raised couches of happiness, face to face. They shall suffer no fatigue, nor shall they ever be ejected from there. O prophet, give my servants the important news that I, I alone, am most certainly the one great protector, the ever merciful. And also tell them that my punishment is a very grievous one and also give them the important news about Abraham's guests. When they entered upon him and greeted him, saying, Peace be upon you, he answered, We feel afraid of you. They said, Have no fear. We give you good tidings of the birth of a son endowed with knowledge. He, Abraham, said, do you give me the good tidings in spite of the fact that old age has come upon me? So on what basis are you giving me this good tidings? They said, We give you good tidings on the basis of the revelation of truth. Therefore do not be of the despairing ones. He said, And who despairs of the mercy of his Lord but the erring ones? He added, O you messengers, what is your real business then? They said, We have been sent to destroy a guilty people, accepting the followers of Lot because they are not guilty. We shall invariably deliver them all, accepting his wife, of whom God says, We have decided that she will not accompany those ordained to be delivered, but shall be really of those staying behind. When the messengers came to Lot and his followers, Lot said, Surely you are an unknown people. I apprehend evil from you because of your coming. They said, You need no apprehensions, but we have come to you with the news of that punishment about the truth of which they doubted. And we have come to you with the sure news, and most certainly we are truthful. So set forth from here, with your people in the latter part of the night, and yourself following in their wake. Let none of you look about and lag behind, but proceed to where you are commanded. 
and we appraised him with certainty of this decree, that the roots and last remnants of these people are to be cut off when they rise at dawn. And the residents of the city came rejoicing to the house of Lot. Lot said, Surely these are my guests. Therefore do not put me to shame by your disrespectful behavior towards them. And keep your duty to Allah, and disgrace me not. They said, Have we not told you not to entertain all sorts of unknown people? He said, here are my daughters as hostages to serve as a guarantee that the strangers will not make a mischief if you must do something to make any investigation against me. Prophet, by your holy life and by your true faith, these your opponents are also wandering distractedly in a fit of frenzy. Then a dreadful punishment overtook these at sunrise. We turned it upside down and rained upon the people petrified hard stones of clay constantly. Surely in this narrative there are many signs for such as can interpret signs. And the ruins of these townships lie on a road that still exists. Behold, in this narration is indeed a sign for the believers. Certainly the dwellers of the thicket of Midian were also a wrongdoing people. Therefore, we inflicted punishment on them, and the ruins of both their cities, the city of Sodomites and the city of Acre, lie indeed on the open highway traversed by the caravans from Hijaz to Syria. And the dwellers of the Hijr, a township of Thamud lying between Tabuk and Medina, also cried lies to the messengers. And we gave them our commandments, but they were averse to them. And they, in search of a life of peace and security, used to hew some parts of the mountains into houses feeling secure therein. But the dreadful punishment overtook them in the morning, so that all that they had accomplished was of no avail to them. And we have not created the heavens and the earth, and all that is between the two, but to suit the requirements of truth and wisdom. And the threatened hour of punishment is sure to come, so turn away from them with goodly grace. Surely it is your Lord who is the great Creator, the possessor of perfect knowledge. And in fact, we have given you the seven oft-recited verses of Surat al-Fatiha and the Grand Qur'an. Extend not your eyes desirously towards the fleeting enjoyments we have bestowed on some classes of people among them, nor grieve over this destruction of them, and be kind and gentle to the believers. And proclaim, I am indeed the plain warner promised by God. Since we have decided to send down this revelation full of warnings to those who have formed themselves into factions by taking oaths against you, and who have pronounced the Qur'an to be a pack of lies. So by your Lord we will surely question them all about their misdeeds. Therefore, declare openly what you are commanded to deliver, and turn away from the polytheists. We do suffice you to punish those who treat you scornfully who set up an other god beside Allah, but they shall soon come to know the consequences. And we know indeed that your mind is distressed because of polytheistic things that they say. So the remedy of this distress is that you glorify your Lord with all his true praise and be of those who prostrate themselves before him and go on worshipping your Lord until there comes to you that which is certain and you breathe your last. El-Nahl, the Bee With the name of Allah, the Most Gracious, the Ever Merciful. The command of Allah regarding the punishment to the disbelievers has come. Therefore, you need not seek to expedite it, 
before its appointed time. And he is beyond and far above all the things they associate with him. He sends down the angels with the revelation by his command to such of his servants as he will, saying, Warn the people that there is no other, cannot be, and will never be one worthy of worship but I. Therefore take only me as a shield. He has created the heavens and the earth to suit the requirements of truth and wisdom. He is beyond and far above all the things they associate with him. He has created human being from a mere drop of fluid, a small life germ. Then look, what a perspicuous and sound debater he has turned out to be. And the cattle too he has created. They provide you with the things giving warmth and various other benefits, and through some of these cattle you obtain your food. And in them there is for you provision of graceful beauty and a matter of pride and honor. When you bring them home in the evening and when you drive them out to pasture in the morning. And it is these cattle that carry your heavy loads to lands that you could never reach except by putting yourselves to great hardships. Indeed, your Lord is most compassionate, ever merciful. And he has created horses, mules, and donkeys, that you may ride them and look graceful. And he will yet create for you things of which today you have no knowledge. And because he is our creator, Upon Allah lies the responsibility of leading to the right path, for there are some paths deviating from the right and moderate course, and so they lead astray. And if he had enforced his will, he would have guided you all. He it is who poured down water from the clouds for you. It provides you with a drink. It produces the plants on which you pasture your herds of cattle. He thereby grows for you the crops of corn and olives and date palms and vines and all kinds of other fruit. Surely in that there is a sign for a people who reflect. And he has made subservient to you the night and the day and the sun and the moon. And similarly, the stars, too, are made subservient to you by his command. Surely in that there are many a sign for a people who make use of their understanding. And consider over that what he has created for you in the earth, which is of varying colors and qualities. Verily in that is, of course, a sign for a people who take heed. And he it is who has made subservient to you the sea, that you may eat of its fresh flesh of fish, and may bring forth out of it precious and beautiful things of ornaments for your wear. And you see the ships cleaving through it. They do so that you may journey with ease, and that you may seek of his bounty in other ways, and that you may render thanks to him. And he has placed firm mountains in the earth, lest it shall quake, and that they may be a source of benefit and provision of food for you, and has made rivers flow on it, and many routes that you may take the right way to reach your goal. And he has established many other landmarks as well. It is by these, and by the stars too, that the people can follow the right direction. Can he then who creates out of nothing be like those who can create naught? Will you not then take heed? If you count Allah's blessings and bounties upon you, they are so many that you will never be able to number them. Most surely Allah is great protector, ever merciful. Allah knows all that you conceal and all that you profess to do openly. And the things whom they call upon, apart from Allah, can create nothing. Rather, they are themselves created. They are dead, not alive, 
and they do not perceive when they shall be raised to life again. Your God is one God, but as for those who do not believe in the hereafter, their hearts are strangers to the truth, and they are full of vanity. As a matter of fact, Allah knows what they conceal and all that they profess and do openly. Surely he does not love such vain persons at all. And when these disbelievers are asked, What is, in your opinion, that which your Lord has sent down? They say, They are mere stories of the ancients. They say it with the result that they will bear their own burdens in full on the day of resurrection and also a portion of the burdens of those who are without knowledge and whom they are leading astray because of their ignorance. Look, how evil is the burden which they bear. Their predecessors did also hatch schemes against the prophets. Allah struck at the very root of their foundations so that the roof fell down from above them and the punishment came upon them from quarters they did not perceive. That is not all. Then on the day of resurrection, he will disgrace them and will say, Where are my so-called partners associated with me by you, for whose sake you used to oppose my prophets and the believers in truth? At that time, those who have been given the knowledge would say, Surely this day disgrace and calamity shall be the lot of the disbelievers. Those whom the angels cause to die, while they are still engrossed in doing wrong to themselves. When they are on the point of death, they will offer submission, saying, We used to do no evil. The angels will say, It is not as you say. Surely Allah knows well all that you have been doing. Therefore enter the gates of Jehenna to abide therein. Evil indeed is the abode of those whose hearts are full of vanity and pride. And when it is said to those who guard it against evil, What do you think is that which your Lord has revealed? They said, The best. There is a good reward in this world for those who do good, but the abode of the hereafter they shall have is indeed far better. How excellent is the abode of those who become secure against evil. These abodes they shall enter are gardens of eternity, served with running streams to keep them green and flourishing. They shall have therein all that they desire. That is how Allah rewards those who become secure against evil. Those are happy indeed whom the angels cause to die while they are pure, saying, Peace be upon you, enter paradise, because of those noble deeds you have been doing. These disbelievers only wait for the angels to descend upon them with the punishment, or that the decisive decree of your Lord should come to pass. Their predecessors acted in a wrong way as they do. Allah did not deal with them unjustly but they have been doing injustice to themselves, so that the evil consequences of their deeds afflicted them, and that punishment which they used to look down upon encompassed them. Those who associated partners with Allah said, Had Allah so willed, neither we nor our fathers would have worshipped anything apart from him, nor would we have forbidden anything without sanction from him. Their predecessors acted as they do, but there is no other responsibility upon the messengers except the delivery of the message in plain terms. And we raised a messenger among every community, teaching, Worship Allah and shun the transgressor. Thus there were some among them whom Allah guided, and there were some among them who were condemned to be lost. So travel in the land, and behold how evil was the end of those who cried lies to the truth. Prophet, if you are solicitous of their guidance, then know that Allah never guides those who lead others astray knowingly.
and they shall have no helpers to protect them against the evil consequences of their deeds. And they have sworn by Allah their most earnest oaths that Allah will not raise the dead to life. Why not? It is a promise binding upon him. He has guaranteed it, but most people do not know this true fact. It is a fact that he will raise the dead to life so that he may make plain to them the things over which they were at variance in the present life, and so that the disbelievers may know that they were truly liars. Our word to a thing, when we intend it to come into being, is only that we say to it, Be, and it comes to be. We will certainly provide a goodly abode in this world for those who emigrated from their homes in the cause of Allah after they were dealt with unjustly. And truly the reward that they shall have in the hereafter is greater still. If the disbelievers but knew, it would have been much better for them. These are those emigrants who patiently persevered and put their trust in their Lord alone. And we sent not as messengers before you but they were men to whom we revealed our teachings. So ask the people of the reminder, if you do not know. We sent these above mentioned men with clear proofs and scriptures. And similarly now we have revealed to you the reminder that you may explain to humankind the commandments that have been sent down to them so that they may ponder and reflect over it. Do they? who have been hatching evil plots against you, feel secure that Allah will not abase them in this very earth and that punishment will not befall them from quarters they perceive not? Or do they feel secure that he will not seize them in their going to and fro so that they shall not be able to frustrate him in his designs and plans? Or it may be that he will take them to task through a process of gradual diminution until disbelief is completely annihilated? For surely your Lord is all compassionate, ever merciful. Have they not considered that the shadow of everything which Allah has created shift from the right and from the left, prostrating themselves to Allah in obedience to His laws in humble supplication? All that is in the heavens and on the earth, of the crawling and moving creatures and the angels too, make obeisance to Allah, and they do not disdain to worship Him. They fear disobedience to their Lord above them, and do whatever they are commanded. Allah has said, Take not to you two gods to worship. He is the only one God. Therefore, Stand in awe of me, and I repeat, me alone. All that is in the heavens and on the earth belongs to him. Obedience is due to him forever. Will you still take something other than Allah as your shield? And whatever blessings you have come from Allah. And when affliction befalls you, it is to him that you cry for redress. Yet, as soon as he removes the affliction from you, some among you begin to associate others as partners with their Lord in his worship. With the result that they show ingratitude for the favors which we have bestowed upon them. Well, enjoy yourselves a little, for soon you will know the evil consequences of your ingratitude. And they set apart for the false gods a portion of that gift we have provided them with about the reality of which they know not. By Allah, you will be called upon to account for all that you have forged. And they assign daughters to Allah. Holy is he, whereas they wish to have for themselves what they desire. When one of them is given the tidings of the birth of a female, his face clouds up and darkens in sorrow, and he is full of grief and anger suppressed up. He hides himself in shame from the people because of the so-called bad news he has received, considering whether he should keep her alive in spite of disgrace or commit her somewhere in the dust, 
Look, evil in every way is the judgment they make. Evil in every way is the state of those who do not believe in the hereafter, while sublime are the attributes of Allah in every respect, and He is the Almighty, all wise. And if Allah were to seize the people immediately for their committing injustice and their inscribing partners with Him, he would not leave any unjust and polytheistic living and crawling creature on the face of the earth. But he gives them respite till an appointed term. So when their time of punishment comes, they cannot delay it by a single moment and escape it, nor can they go ahead of it to save themselves from it. And they ascribe to Allah what they dislike for themselves. Nevertheless, their tongues utter the lie that they shall have the best of everything in the hereafter. As a matter of fact, there awaits them the fire, and indeed they are the ones to be sent therein in advance and abandoned. By Allah, we did send messengers to all nations before you, but it so happened that Satan made their evil deeds fair seeming to them. So he is their patron again this day, and there awaits them a grievous punishment. We have sent to you this perfect book for no other purpose but that you may explain to the people things over which they differ among themselves, and that it may serve as a guidance and a mercy for a people who would believe in it. And Allah has sent down water of divine revelation from above, and with it he has given life to the whole of earth after its death. Surely there is a sign in this for a people who would listen to the truth. And most surely you have an evidence in the cattle also which should lead you from ignorance to knowledge. We feed you with pure milk which lies in their bellies, betwixt the feces and the blood which is agreeable and sweet for those who drink it. And we feed you with the fruits of the date palms and the vine too. You obtain from it intoxicants and wholesome food. In that there is a remarkable sign for a people who make use of their understanding. And your Lord inspired the bees, saying, Make your hives in the hills and in the trees and in the trellises which the people erect. Then eat of every kind of fruit, and follow the ways and laws of your Lord, as that have been made easy for you. There comes forth from their insides a fine fluid of varying hues, which is a cure for the people. In fact, in this there is a sign for a people who reflect. Allah has created you, then he causes you to die, and there are some of you who are driven to the worst part of life, with the result that he knows nothing after having had knowledge. Verily, Allah is all-knowing, all-powerful. And Allah has given to some of you better means of sustenance than to others, but the preferred ones would not give away and restore to their bondsmen their share of sustenance even though they are equal sharers with them. Do they then deny the bounty of Allah? And Allah has made for you mates from your own species, and has given you sons, daughters, and grandchildren from your mates, and has provided you with good and pure things. Will the people still believe in vain and false things, and deny the blessing of Allah? and they worship apart from Allah such things as possess no authority to grant them any provision from the heavens and the earth, nor can they ever have such power in fact. So coin not similitudes to Allah. Allah knows its evil and you do not know. Allah sets forth for your knowledge an excellent description of a slave who is owned by another and who has no power over anything. On the other hand, there is another, a free man, whom we have provided with goodly provision from ourself, and he spends out of it secretly and openly in our cause. 
Can they both be alike? No, not at all. All true and perfect praise belongs to Allah. But the thing is, most of these people do not know. And Allah sets forth an excellent description of other two men. One of them is dumb and has no power over anything, and he is a useless burden on his master. Wherever he sends him, he fetches no good. Can he be like the man who enjoins justice and who follows the exact right path? No, not at all. And to Allah belongs the knowledge of the hidden realities of the heavens and the earth. And the matter of the coming of the promised hour is just like the twinkling of an eye. Maybe it is nearer still. Behold, Allah is possessor of every power to do all he will. And Allah brought you forth from the wounds of your mothers, while you were void of all knowledge. He gave you ears, eyes, and hearts, so that you might render him thanks. Have they not seen the birds held under subjection while flying in the vault of the heaven? None withholds them from falling down but Allah. In this there are signs for a people who believe. Allah has made your houses a place of rest for you, and he has also made for you of the skins of the cattle houses of tents, which you find light to carry at the time of your journey and useful at the time when you halt. And out of their wool, and their furs, and their hair, he has supplied you with household goods and other articles of temporary use and utility. And Allah has provided you shelter from the sun in the things that he has created. He has made places of retreat in the mountains, and he has made for you such garments as protect you from heat and cold and the coats of mail to guard you in intensity of your wars. Just as he has given you these things, thus does he complete his favors upon you, that you may submit wholly to him. But if still these opponents turn away, you should know that upon you is only the responsibility of delivery of the divine message in plain terms. They recognize the bounty of Allah, yet they deny it. Most of them have no sense of gratitude for his favors. And beware of the day when we shall raise a witness from among every nation. Then those who were ungrateful shall not be given leave to make amends, nor shall they be afforded an opportunity to approach the threshold of God, to offer a plea or an excuse, and thus solicit his good will. And when those who behaved unjustly actually face the punishment in the hereafter, it shall neither be reduced for them, nor shall they be given respite. And when those who associate partners with God will see their associate gods, they will say, Our Lord, these are partners associated with you by us, whom we used to call upon instead of you. But they, the so-called partners, will retort them with the words, Most surely you are liars. And on that day they shall tender submission to Allah, and all that they used to forge shall forsake them. As to those who disbelieve and hinder the people from Allah's way, we shall enhance many times over their punishment because of the evil they wrought. Beware of the day when we shall raise from every people a witness who shall hail from among themselves and who shall testify against them. And we shall bring you, O Muhammad, as a witness against all these. And that is why we have revealed to you this perfect book explaining every basic thing and which serves as a guidance and a mercy and gives good tidings to those who submit to God. Allah enjoins justice and the doing of good to others and giving like kindred, and he forbids indecencies and manifest evil and transgression. He admonishes you that you may take heed and attain eminence. And keep your covenant with Allah when you have once made any covenant with him, and do not break your oaths once you have ratified them 
while you have already made Allah your surety. Verily, Allah knows how you conduct yourselves. And be not like the woman who breaks her yarn after spinning it strong, with hard labor into thread. You use your oaths to deceive one another for fear lest one nation should become more powerful than the other nation. Surely Allah tries you thereby, and on the day of resurrection will make clear to you all the things about which you had been differing from one another. Had Allah enforced his will, he would surely have made you all one nation, following one and the same faith. But he leaves in error him who wishes to remain so, and guides him who wishes to be guided. And you shall surely be called upon to account for your deeds and conduct. Do not use your oaths to deceive one another, or you will lose your foothold again after having gained stability, and you will suffer evil consequences for your barring the people from following Allah's way, and for forsaking the path of Allah, and you shall receive great punishment. And do not sell the covenant you made with Allah for a paltry price. That reward of righteousness, which is with Allah, is better for you if you only knew. Did you but know that which is with you shall pass away, being transitory, but that which is with Allah is enduring and will last? And we will certainly give those who patiently persevere their reward according to the best of their deeds. Whoever acts righteously, whether male or female, and is a believer, we will certainly enable him to lead a pure life, and surely we will bestow on such their reward according to the best of their deeds. And when you recite the Qur'an, seek refuge with Allah from Satan the rejected. Surely he has no authority over those who believe and put their trust in their Lord. His authority is over those only who take him as their friend and who associate partners with him under his influence. And Allah knows very well the need of what he reveals. Yet when we replace a revelation with another revelation, they say to you, You are only a fabricator of lies. The truth is, however, that most of them know nothing. Say, the spirit of holiness has brought this Qur'an down from your Lord to suit the requirements of truth and wisdom. Allah has revealed it so that he may strengthen those who believe in their faith and so that this may serve as a guidance and good tidings for Muslims. And we know fully well what they say by way of objection, that this Qur'an is not revealed by God but it is only what a human being instructs to him. But strange it is that the tongue of him to whom they unjustly allude of making this insinuation is foreign and wanting in clearness, whereas the language of this Qur'an is chaste Arabic, plain and clear. Surely Allah will not guide those to success who do not believe in the messages of Allah intentionally there awaits them a grievous punishment. It is only those who do not believe in Allah's messages who forge lies, and it is they who are the liars themselves. Those who disbelieve in Allah after they have believed in Him, but not those who are compelled to recant while their hearts find peace and are firm in the faith, and those who accept disbelief from the core of their hearts shall incur the displeasure of Allah and shall receive a stern punishment. That is because they have preferred the present life to the hereafter, and because Allah does not guide the disbelieving people to their goal. It is these people on whose hearts, hearing, and eyes Allah has set a seal for their disbelief. And it is these people who are really heedless. Undoubtedly, it is they who will be the very losers in the hereafter. Again, those who emigrated from their homes after they had been persecuted and strove hard in the cause of Allah and patiently persevered will ultimately find that your Lord, yes, your own Lord is indeed great protector, 
ever merciful to them. The perfect manifestation of such a recompense will be on the day when every soul shall come pleading for protection for itself, and every soul shall be repaid in full for its deeds, and they shall in no way be dealt with unjustly. And Allah sets forth an excellent description of a township. It enjoyed a state of security and peace. It received its provision in plenty from every quarter. But it so happened that it began to show ingratitude for the bounties of Allah. So Allah made the citizens of it taste a pall of hunger and fear, which covered it like a garment. The conditions of famine and war prevailed there because of what its citizens had wrought. And certainly there had come to them a great messenger from among their own men, but they cried lies to him, so the promised punishment overtook them while they were behaving transgressingly. So believers, eat of the lawful, good, and pure things Allah has provided you, and give thanks for Allah's bounty, if it is, in fact, him that you worship. He has made unlawful for you only carrion, that which dies of itself. Blood flowed out, the flesh of swine and that which has been sacrificed in some other name than Allah's. But he who is constrained to do this, not desiring it and having no intention either to disobey or to exceed the limits of necessity, will find that Allah surely is great protector ever merciful and do not say because of the lies which your tongues utter this is lawful and that is unlawful lest you should forge a lie against allah those who forge lies against allah will never attain the goal though in forging lies they may enjoy themselves for a brief spell in this life yet a grievous punishment awaits them in the hereafter we have already made unlawful to those also who Judaized all that we have related to you already. And we did not deal with them unjustly. Rather, they wronged themselves. Again, those who commit evil in ignorance, and then after that turn to him in repentance and mend their ways, will find that surely after that, for those who repent, your Lord is great protector, ever merciful. The truth of the matter is that Abraham was a paragon of virtue, obedient to Allah, upright, and he was not of the polytheists. Highly thankful for his favors, he chose him and guided him on to the exact right path, and we granted him great success and all comforts of this life, and in the hereafter, he is most surely among the righteous. Again, Prophet, to complete our favors on Abraham, we have revealed to you, saying, Follow the creed of Abraham, who was an upright devotee of God, and was not of the polytheists. The punishment for profaning the Sabbath was made to recoil on those only who were at odds over it and your Lord will surely judge between them concerning all their differences on the day of resurrection. Prophet, call the people to the way of your Lord with wisdom and goodly and kind exhortation, and argue with them in the most pleasant and best manner. Surely your Lord knows very well who has gone astray from his path, and he knows very well the guided ones to the path. Believers, if you have to punish the oppressors, then punish them to the extent you have been persecuted. But if you endure patiently, remember, it is far better for the patiently persevering. And be patiently persevering. Verily, you can exercise patient endurance only with the help of Allah. Do not grieve at their state, nor feel distressed on account of their intrigues out of enmity for you. Allah is of course with those who guard against evil and those who are doers of good to others.